Uh, about you, Connor. Morning, guys. Uh, that's, morning. It's, yeah, we've got to do an opener, mate. Oh, yeah, what for? For Wednesday's video. Fucking up this bright in the morning. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> sunny today, early in the morning. That's, oh, that's picking up already. I've got a suntan. <laughs> mate, I'm never my best that time of the morning. Afternoon, guys. We're Afternoon. running a bit late on the opener today, but just sit back and enjoy uh, this episode of the Days Low Weekly. Yeah, D to the L to the L to the D weekly. Hi, Pipe. Bosh, bosh. Morning, people. Morning, Monday morning. Uh, bright, bright Monday morning. There's the team look. Speaking Danese. That's the language of the Danes family. Uh, I've been with them long enough to sort of, I can translate, I can't speak it. So what's on today? What's on today, Junkie? Oh, a lot of work. A lot, lot of work. work. A lot, a lot of, of work. We've got the professionals to do it today. Yeah. So Andy and Chunky are on route manoeuvres. So they've got a, we've got a customer with a massive route picture uh, that they tried getting out with a smaller machine, but no luck. Not us, someone else. So we're taking the nine tonner. Chunky's taking the nine tonner down on the flatbed. Andy's taking the one seven because there are some smaller routes in the back garden that we can't get to with the night runner, and that's what they're doing. The, the pecker, obviously you saw last week that the pecker, uh, the headstock snapped, nightmare. And what actually it managed to do was not only snap the weld, but also bend inch thick plate. Now, Sam was gonna have a Saturday on this welding it up, but our little welder just, I don't think it's man enough, but luckily we have our own, some might say, better welder fabber on site mick big shout out to mick thank you he got involved and he has absolutely sorted it out of good and so he's plated this up he's re-welded all this put some more plates in for extra strength either side that is a lovely bit of work he is mick is actually a oil rig as far as i understand he works on the oil rigs welding uh, so he's sort of six weeks out on rig, six weeks back here, and he's got a unit where we have. Uh, and so he is our go-to expert welder. And so that's what he's done. He's managed to get that all sorted. Know, that's, that might even be a bit of new plate, actually, that he's put on there. See, so that's going back to the customer. Uh, got new pipes made up by our lovely friend down the road. Mr. Haylock, and we've sheathed them, lovely. And is in uniform today, I don't know what's going on. Look. Yeah, I think so. Look. So yes, that's us for the day. And then obviously we're back at the porcelain job. We're hoping that three days more, we'll get there. Look at Chunky, look, look. Got the buckets on, mate. Chunky. Did Chunky sort all the slabs out over the weekend as well? Is that what he said? He said they're all done? No, he's put the... Oh, put the bucket. bucket. Take some more slabs today, guys. Uh, yeah, for the porcelain. Yeah, that's about it really, Sam, isn't it, mate? Yeah, not a lot to say, mate. Not a lot to say. So we're going to get cracking. Yeah, bit. So, uh, so the weekend just gone, uh, Sam was in his element at, uh, what was it, a car boot? No, it was like a garage sale. A village garage sale. A village garage sale, mainly st staffed by the Danes family. Yeah, there was a lot of them. What did you buy, Sam? I bought uh, a chicken roasting tray <laughs> for Stephanie. <laughs> and uh, I said to Gemma, I said, now I need something to wash it up with. So I bought a little washing up stand that can go outside the camper when we're on our truck tours. Did you go and look at any other stools or no, just theirs? I just sat there, had a coffee outside the shop. Dave, Dave, Dave the shop. at the shop. It worked quite well actually. Yeah, yeah. weather was nice. We went to uh, the oh, wow. South Suffolk show. Oh, what, uh, Ampton? Yeah, Ampton, South Suffolk Good show. Days. I saw our friend James. James Sell. Oh, did we saw him walking around, yep. Yeah. Didn't see anyone else I know. Well, kids from my school. That's where school. I bought the Eagle from last year. Picture here. Picture Eagle. of the I Eagle. Won it in an auction last year on the show. We uh, didn't buy anything. Other than, we didn't even eat, the kids did, we didn't eat. Kids on a few rides, 80 pounds it cost us. 
for not for nothing. I, I mean, I've got some lovely, uh, lovely panoramic shots that I'm going to show the it's, audience. Uh, it's mental. Yeah, but it's a it's a good weekend. It is. We went there last year. Uh, this is this is what I saw. Gosh. Hi guys, I'm at the South Suffolk show today in Ampton near Ferris Evans with tractors and horses and all sorts. Yep, yep. When you hit the ground, I can recall the time and place on a midnight walk through the old streets, trying to turn back the clock to the days of old. Back to These diddy ones. As the clock strikes one, the memory lives just as it stood, like a quiet dream. What a bit of kit. Look at this. Are you going in the big one, are you? Look at that. You're going with Wilbur. Nanny, you should in Wilbur's seat. Otherwise, it will just annoy me. No, I not go in the seat. Errol, you better go in that one. I'll go in this one now. Look at these with a set of controls. I the holder. I got the holder. Wow, guys. What an awesome bit of kit. What happened if I do that? Nothing, it's all turned off. Right, we had a look, guys. Come on then, let's go. Okay. Another one of the class bits of kit. Uh, a tractor. That's as far as my knowledge goes. Quality. Compost, oh, I don't know, yeah. Phil Compost. Phil Compost. Oh, yeah. uh, they were doing a demonstration in the main arena of uh, forage harvester. What's it called? Yeah. You know, it picks it. Awesome, mate. It was crazy. Yeah. They had a massive class Lexion 7700, 770. Well, it's 7700. 7700. I was like, I'm not going to say what it is on the camera because I ain't got a clue. Uh, but we managed to go inside it and that. It, it's, it's insane. Insane bits of kit. But yeah, good uh, good day had by all. Did Very hot. Finish farm to farm? Oh, half what? Is the next half out? We've done a whole lot, mate. Oh, I'll have to do that the weekend. The next half is finished now. It's done. Well, as in it's this series is done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the four came out and they released the other four and it was a what a watch. Oh I'll have to watch them to yeah. this week. Yes. And shout out to Diddy Squat Farm. Diddy Squat, Caleb and the crew. The Danes boys will come up and see you. The Danes boys, the Danes low boys will come <laughs> up and see you at some point. Yeah. Right, well anyway. these boys are off out and we're off out. Yes. Uh let's get going. Bye bye. More merch. More merch going out. Thank you very much, Lee Rosser and Barry Rayner. These are going in a mailbox on their way to you. Hip hip. Uh, quick one, guys. We're on site. We're getting started. So much to do. So we're going to lay cuts, get these in, finish cuts, sorted, blah, blah, blah. Uh, waffle, waffle, time lapse. Yep. Hello, hello there. Hello, hello. 
Uh, we're getting there, guys. We're getting there. All that area done. All the cuts up to the door done. We are now on the final bit of curvature leading to there and then edging all the way around. And then paving is complete. Oh, wait, no. Manhole, infill, step, top. Then paving is complete. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> We've got one slab over that side to cut and the edging to finish. Then paving is complete. Sure. No? Oh yeah, forget to get that. It's like the Spanish Inquisition. Uh, a slab round there, round there. Obviously we haven't laid that yet because we need to go back and forth. Connor's had a lovely time tied up outside, didn't you, Con? Did you find, did you enjoy it? Did you have fun? No, I didn't enjoy it, mate. Just can't please some people. We were petting goats. Where did you go, Con, at the weekend? Where'd you go? Tell the people. They want to know. They want to know what Connor does on his day off. Day off from weekend, mate. Yeah, time off, isn't it? Is it? Well, yeah, it usually is. Farm, mate. Um, farm. She's a farmer, isn't he? Eat, eat, sleep, Mary's farm, Mary's repeat. Farm. I'm Mary. I can't... Little, little Mary's farm. Right, anyway. Hi folks, uh, yes yeah, so that's Monday on site done and I feel we feel like this job has got to the point where we keep saying this is what we're going to get to today and we don't get there even though we stop for all of like 20, no, probably half an hour across the day. The plan was to get all the paving down, we're a little bit short. So we've got both those second curves in now, so we've got about, what's that, one, two, three, four. 3.6 meters left of sets to do. We've got the last slab between the path and the patio to do. Manhole steps. Other than that, all the paving is down. Not where we want to get to though. So yes, all the edging. Lovely sweeping curve. Lovely sweeping curve. Straight curve. Now tomorrow it's talking about rain, so we're going to bring some tarps and some gazebos because we need to get that manhole in, that step finished. At some point we need to point the top course. Obviously we didn't want to use the slabbing muck because it would be a different colour. Uh, we've got to then let that go off before we point the slabs and clean the brickwork. We want to point the slabs before we fill the stone traps because obviously all the pointing will go into the stone traps. We've got a little bit drain, a couple of holes to pop in for the drainage. We've got turf to lay, and that's just in the back garden. <laughs> oh, stressing hell. Topsoil to feather in round here just to tidy it all up. It's been one of them days, isn't it? It's been one of them days today, mate. No one's had any motivation. I've had my head up my arse all day. Well, to be expected. Tomorrow is a brighter day. And I think I think you said it. We're here Thursday, we're here Thursday. Yeah, if, if we finish Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, man day, uh, actual man day is delivered. Yeah, we're probably we're probably about right for man days delivered. Obviously with the new yard set up and the other parts of the business, the mandates can be waylaid. Uh, and we have been, we are, I mean usually Sam's a bit more pessimistic on these sort of things and actually gets it on the head, but I think we've all been a bit optimistic on this one. Uh, yeah, stone traps to fill down here. Connor had a lovely tidy up out here though today. It's done well today. You've got all that on that transit look. One Transit's two. loaded, so we've got all the crush loaded from down here. All the edge lifted, ready to re-edge. 
that's all finished. Obviously we've got the sleepers there for the raised beds. So out here, we've got to finish the edging, get the edging all the way around, build the beds, and then give it a um, prop. We've got a big jet wash and a brush, rubber brush coming on Wednesday. So we're gonna give it a proper good jet wash Wednesday. And then we that case, probably be back Thursday morning to put, sweep in the fill dry, but you can't do that when it's wet. Because otherwise it, yeah, it doesn't really work. But we're close. We are close. There's been a lot of it will be so today is our 15th day. 16th, 17th, so 18 calendar days. We had 15 calendar days down for it, but man days, can't remember how many put into this one. Uh, you'll probably see me and Sam's demeanor getting quite intense up until the 1st of June. Because, uh, yeah. Anyway, here's uh, Connor sweeping. The, uh, the little ray of sunlight on a otherwise bleak day. Tashibo! Tashibo! Right, we're here guys, we're on site. The rain is persisting, but it's a bit less than it was when we left. Wet, wet, wet. Got a nice gazebo up, we're gonna get these edgings finished. I'm gonna cut this for that gap over there. We've got a manhole to cut and put in, steps to do. And that one, for some reason, popped out last night. So I've got to relay that. Because uh, of the rain and the water, uh, be less waffle, more work. Yep. Right, so we're around the front now. We've got most of the, we've got all the cuts down now, other than the manhole and the steps. But we're going to do that with brick muck because of the join. So now we're all around the front. For the first time, you're gonna have some footage of work being done out the front. So me and Connor are gonna get these cuts done to get the cuts in here up to the edging, and then obviously continue all the way up to the top there. Sam is gonna work his way around to us from this side. So Sam's getting the edgings in along the top edge, along here. And then the last thing we'll do today is the final edge along the front, because obviously we can't drive over it when that's done. Got to get these areas cleared out for the raised beds. So just get this cleared out, knocked about a bit for the raised beds. Finish this edging off to here, build the raised beds, and then we're surrounding them with stone, a sort of dove grey stone. Uh, and they'll mirror either side, so one there and one there. So we're going to get on with the edging, the cutting and the edging. And Connor's on the mix and blend. Happy as always. Uh, yeah, I said you're happy as always, Connor. Just a barrel of laughs, man, aren't you? Morning, noon, and night. Okay, guys, yep, yep. What O team, that's all of the edging down, all of the edging down, all along the front edge, all the way along there, Connor, all the way back round there. The edging is done. And the weather is holding off, touch wood. It's a bit damp. Do I lift, mate? All right, I'll move this gazebo.
It happened, guys. It happened. We finally laid all the paving in the garden. Yep, yep. All the paving is laid. Step laid, manhole laid, patio laid, all the edging laid. So I've just got to point up the step, point up the sort of top course of here. And then we've got some beds to build, but the, the main bulk of the work in the back is done. Yes. How do you feel about it, Connor? Try not to turn on the spot. Try and try and turn as you move. Huh? Yep. Yeah, anyway, uh, obviously we need to have a hell of a good clean. We've got a big pressure washer coming tomorrow to clean the front and we'll bring it around here, I imagine, and uh, clean this lot up. Lovely weather for ducks. Just point it at me and Connor. It's already recording, just hold it and point it at us. <laughs> Well done, dear gentlemen. We're standing here, watching it, watching it. What's they coming up in a minute? That's it, guys. You just had Chunky filming. We're going to get him into the habit, you see. I'm not sure what sort of commentary you have, but me and Connor lifted those sleepers out, and they, they must be a good hundred. 120, 130 kilos, they're heavy. Come on, they're well, because only weighs about eight kilos. Ten men! Hi there. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> oh, coffee. Coffee. Is this got Tashimo creamer in? No. Oh, it's just standard milk. That's all right. Thank you for the coffee, Sam. Mate, I'm worked hard enough as it is, bruv, without creaming up your coffees, mate. Oh, it's Connor hot as well. No, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't put much effort in that, mate. I'm absolutely bamboozled. Hot water cup, something else. Uh, yes, I'm anyway, mate. we are interrupt uh, this Wednesday video for the key ring uh, announcement. The key ring announcement? Yes. And we'd like to say... <laughs> <laughs> we'd like to say well done to David Gill. Hello, mate. I know you comment quite a lot. He does. He's a good commenter, is David, aren't you, mate? And so, yes, a key wing. A key wing? A key wing. A key wing is winging its way to you once you send us your address and yeah. stuff. So you can either have a key ring or a key wing. What yes. What you fancy? Uh, a key wing. A key wing winging its way. Yeah. Yeah. So we've just messaged you, mate. Let us know your details. I mean, by the time you watch this, you've probably already got it. Yeah. We'll get it sent out to you. Let us know. Uh, yeah, and then Friday, if Friday's episode... You'll see best comment of the yeah, week. Yeah, best comment of the week. And that person will win a Danes Lowe super fan key ring. Yeah. And uh, I suppose what we need is. A time off. Yeah, plenty of that. And. Question of the week. All we've got to say is ha hi guys. How much, well, porcelain say hi guys mate. how much porcelain was laid in the last job in square metres? Well, that's a lot to remember, mate. How, how, many, say, how many square well, metres? Because we do it every week. He doesn't do we it. Change it up, mate. How he, many, doesn't, he never does it. He never does it. How many square metres? He's a home, mate. How he many square metres of porcelain did we lay? Ready? Action. How many don't square... Don't start it. Don't oh, start up with swearing, Connor, mate. He was, he was on it then. Action. How many square metres of porcelain oh, yeah, did we lay? How many square metres of porcelain did we lay? Oh, that's done now. <laughs> <laughs> sure there you go. Chunky, Chunky right. next week. Oh, right, guys. It now officially is all the slabs down because the little one on the way in is down. Uh, obviously, we've got to protect the step overnight because we don't want the muck to wash out if it rains heavily. So we have uh, weighed the gazebo down so it should sit there lovely overnight. Then tomorrow, it's about turf. So we've got turf this area here. Put a bit of nice fresh topsoil over it, rake it about, turf it, lovely. Feathering topsoil all along these edges, back up to the height of the patio, all the way along. Those three sleepers are gone. We've got to point this brickwork tomorrow and clean it. Stone traps, fill them up. Uh, what else we've got to do around here? Nothing. That is then round here, complete. And other than it looking a bit muddy, it's not looking too bad.
Very carefully there, legs. I mean, Rodney, sorry. I'll get used to it one day. Another smile, that must be another keyring sale. Uh, yeah, so that's out here. We've obviously got to clear these echoes and stone trap. This is then going to be grey stone all the way through here. Let me turn this radio down. I'll turn it off. And then, yeah, we've had a good clean up of site today, ready for pressure washer tomorrow. So we can give all of this a good pressure washing. We've got to rake all that about over there, build the beds. Still a lot to do, guys, but it feels achievable. It may be that we are back here Thursday briefly to kiln dried, depending on weather and stone traps, but we're going to try and smash it out tomorrow. Right, now we're loaded, back to site. No, back to yard. Yep, yep. Right, folks, another day done. That's Tuesday done. We've got that to unload in the morning. Busy day tomorrow. We, uh, Connor and Andy were going to start another job, but we're just going to mob hand the current one and get it finished. So they'll be there probably Thursday because we need to get the job done. Tomorrow's going to be a busy day with some ASMR jet washing hype for all you ASMR jet washing fans. Uh, yes, I'm going to go home now. I've got to take Connor down to the hood to meet up with his G's. And uh, yeah, we'll see you bright and early tomorrow morning. Yep, yep. Oh, and actually also, uh, one thing I didn't, mm, yeah, I'm filming. One thing I didn't show you, uh, yesterday, yeah, yesterday, Chunky and Andy were on a big root maneuver, uh, removing a big root, this one. And there's a nine tonner and the one seven, because they had to get rid of the back garden for the little root. And this is the end result. He didn't take any dirt with him, so God knows how he managed to level it off, because that was a hell of a bit of root to come out, yet, the garden is still the same height as it was before the root came out. Anyway, Andy can, Andy can uh, manufacture dirt just out of his ass. Anyway, I'm gonna go home. Bye-bye. Morning, people. Morning, yes, yeah, ready. Morning, guys, Wednesday morning. Still a bit overcast, but not wet per se. A little bit wet there. Uh, getting these sleepers off. This end, we've got a forklift, so we haven't got a man handle them on, which is a relief for Connor. Yep. Curl down a bit. Yep. Where do you want them? Oh, I can't move out of the way, Connor. Weigh them quickly. So we'll see how much they weigh. We, I reckon they're about one, 150 kilos each. So that should be 450 on the weighing scales. 340, so what's that? 120 kilos each. Still pretty heavy. I'm gonna move this van. And we've got to take some soil, some premium topsoil. Uh, like I said the other day, we need to make sure our new yard, we've got a proper topsoil bay to keep it dry because dealing with tarpaulins covered in soil is literally at the bottom of the list of enjoyable things to do on a Wednesday morning. Here comes Happy, and we'll get some soil loaded up. Yep, yep. morning all so it's wednesday today wednesday all day long uh you won't have seen a lot of me this week uh, on camera bit of a, a bit of a hard week to say the least so it's sunday you'll be watching this uh you'll be watching this next wednesday so would have been a week and a bit since that Sunday, but Sunday I had to have me dog put down, so I had to, I had to make the decision to do so. Uh, and if I'm honest, it's uh, hit me like a steam train. She, uh, she was a huge, huge part of my life. Um, I mean, I'm sitting here now, and it's only been two days, 
three days. Um, and I, I'm, I don't know how to process it. I, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it yet. It's uh, she wasn't well. She was old, very old. Um, Seventeen years I had her. Seventeen years. I had her since I was a late teen, up until now. So I've actually had her longer in my life than she than I had her. So yeah, over half my lifetime I had her. Uh, picture here. This is little Bonnie. Funny story with Bonnie, how I got her. I was working on a building site in the middle of Cambridge when I was 17. Uh, went to the builders merchants to get some sand, I think. And the bloke in front of me was in a transit tipper and then out flies this dog out of his window. Uh, he launched the dog out the window and drove off. Um, so I got out the van picked up the dog, give it to the security guard at Ridgens, chased him down the road. He stopped at the traffic lights. So I done what I needed to do, which was drag him out the van and give him a good couple of smacks. Not condoning any violence here, guys, but you gotta do what you gotta do. Um, I'm a dog lover, always have been. I love all animals. Um, so yeah, I couldn't see that happen. So I took her that day. I think she was two years old when I got her. Already had a litter of pups at 12 months, we found out. Um, but I've had her ever since. Uh, she's become, you know, in them, in, that, in them years, she became my best mate. Uh, she was the only thing that was ever constant in my life. She was always there through thick and thin, always little bonbons. And yeah, sadly, she had to go on Sunday. So it's knocked the... Yeah, it's knocked the air right out of me. I'm not up to filming much. Not feeling very jolly, to say the least. Um, but it is what it is. I, you know, I have a process to go through. I will go through that process, and I will get back to jolly old me. But yeah, there's nothing better. There's nothing better in this life than a dog. You know, they come in all shapes and sizes and there's no, there's no better feeling than owning a dog. They're always there for you. They cheer you up. Um, and, but sadly what comes with owning a dog is eventually they're gonna, they're gonna die and leave you in pieces. So, you know, a lot of people say it's just a dog, get over it. But everyone, everyone processes these things differently. Um, and when you've had a dog as long as I have, seven, 17 years, that's, uh, I mean, me and Jack sat and talked about it the other day and we, you know, it's hard to comprehend that time. That's a long, 17 years, that's a long time to have a dog. I'm surprised, I've never known a dog to live so long. I mean, God knows what that was in dog years, but it's a lot. So anyway, sadly she's gone. Uh, I'll put a little video up here of her when, in her younger days when she was running about in the workshop. Um, but yeah, she's in a better place now. She's not hurting. She can rest. And uh, yeah, so don't expect a lot of me over the next couple, well, from me over the next couple of weeks. You can expect what you want of me, but you might not get it. Uh, don't expect a lot from me over the next couple of weeks. I will bounce back, guys. Uh, but it's just one of them things, isn't it? Got to, you've got to do what you got to do and yeah I just don't feel up to it I'm just got to struggle on with this job get it done but anyway we're going on we're going to site now uh, to crack on but um, yeah I hope you lovely people at home are doing well and are all good thanks for your support as always and pushing this channel along you're a great bunch of people and we love how loyal you are, uh, each and every one of you. Give yourselves a pat on the back because uh, you're doing well and we enjoy, we really enjoy having you around and, and reading your comments. Every week it, it, uh, it doesn't half make us laugh. 
so yeah keep doing what you do guys because it's great um, yeah and we will catch up very very soon yes we will Yo, we're here, Wednesday morning, turf, Andy went to get the turf, so we're getting turf round, lots of lovely turf to get all this area turfed, and we'll give this a clean, we'll give this a good old clean, because it is filthy. And then, yeah, tops all around there, what else we got to do, Connor, mate, anything? What's on your list? Picked up the uh, Easy Joint. Lovely drop of stuff this is. This is the Platinum. Easy Joint Select Platinum. It's uh, the go-to, isn't it, Connor, for the porcelain paving aficionados. Yes, mate. And we've got a big pressure washer, so we'll see that in a minute. So this is the pressure washer, guys, from our lovely friends over at GRA Equipment Tool Hire. Obviously, come to us for your diggers locally but these guys have got some other stuff like this and this lovely sort of patio cleaning brush head on wheels. Lovely bit of kit. Although I need a screwdriver because that is gonna fall off. So I'll get a screwdriver, tighten that up and then we'll give it a go. Right, I'm going to pressure wash. Soil is going round for turfing. Sam is going to start the beds, the sleeper beds, either side. So sleeper beds, turf, pressure washing, soil. It's all go, go, go. Well, I'll get a pencil right. Up. What So I cleaned it up, I need to jet wash it all off and then point. Bed manufacturing, bed fabrication is well underway. So this is one side obviously, 2.4 by 1.2 external because they're going to clad it, I think in the same sort of cedar that they've used on that fence over there. Uh, then we're going to stone around these, we're going to DPM them, topsoil them. So it's three sleepers high, so it's nine sleepers a bed I think. Uh, on the same vein as our post hole borer, an eBay special, uh, we were looking at chop saws. We had a little chop saw, a little DeWalt one, but we wanted one big enough to go through a sleeper. So you need quite a big cross cut to go through a sleeper, because it's quite a big chunk of wood. And we found this on eBay, stand, chop saw. We've had it two and a half years, other than a few little bits, like they had a laser guide that snapped off. Yeah. Other than that, it's been good as gold. Absolutely good, good as gold. And compared to some of the big boy prices, I think it was like 250 quid for the whole lot. Whereas you're looking at the Makita ones and stuff, or Fez tool, uh, you're looking at, well, not much change out of a grand. Anyway, time lapse of bed uh, production. Here we go. Uh, hello there, you joined me back on the patio. So I've given it all a good clean. Look at this, look lovely and clean. I haven't done over there yet because they're bringing soil in. 
but this area is nice and clean. I do need to bring, we've got some uh, mortar clean around there just to get a few of the brick stains off, but that's fine. And now I'm on the joyous job of pointing, infilling the joints with Easy Joint Select Platinum. Yep. And so uh, this is where I've got to so far. So it's a resin based material, almost like sand, almost like sand. And it comes in like a, in this form, you wet it to the point where it's almost like a soup. I mean, a lot of water, the more wet water, the better. So it's nice and wet. And then once it's wet, you simply sweep into the joints. Top tip for sweeping and pointing. You got a top tip, Connor, for sweeping and pointing? Huh? What's your top tip for sweeping and pointing? Wet it up, mate. Wet it up. And also, uh, always brush diagonally across the joints. Never brush in line with the joints because the bristles will go into the joint and pull your pointing out. So this way, no, 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 this way, diagonally across the joints and most of the pointing will stay in. Uh, what you need to do then is go around and make sure that it's all nicely uh, compacted in. You'll get a few bits where after a while it will drop out a little bit. There's just a small air gap under the under the mortar so like here so i go over it once go over it again and then as it dries you buff so you'll get a little bit of residue left on the slab like this and as it dries you go over and buff it off buff it off buff it off so at the end of the day it will all be pointed and clean of any uh, residue they do they do sell a, a chemical to get it off afterwards but we find that if there is anything left, it comes off after a couple of weeks anyway through, through use. Uh, yeah, uh, those guys are getting on with turfing pretty well. Nearly done, look. Lovely bit of turfing. Yes, anyway, I'm gonna carry on pointing and then clean that step. Mm-hmm.